Hey, lightweights, calling all fans of detective style mysteries or Agatha Christie novels. Hercule Poirot, The London Case is a new detective adventure created by the minds behind Microids and the BAFTA Scotland award-winning studio, Blazing Griffin, where your seemingly simple trip to London leads to unexpected turns and mishaps. Team up with a beloved sidekick, solve mysteries using your mind mapping ability, and use an exciting new match puzzle system to solve cases in this gripping new adventure. Hercule Poirot, The London Case is a love letter to Agatha Christie and stays faithful to the lore of her amazing works, a fact that is made even more apparent through the amazing story and exciting mysteries. Thank you to Blazing Griffin Studio for gifting me this exciting game. Without further ado, let's start our adventure and see how well I do as a detective in London. Prologue, the ship. Oh no! Too slow. <laughs> Detective Hercule Poirot? Ah, Chief Commissioner. On the contrary, it is a most convenient time. The safe passage of a painting. Tell me everything. <laughs> the music is so fun. I wish I could say his name as beautifully as it's supposed to be said. <laughs> Instead of my New Yorker butchery. Royal Edward Gallery. Lust. Okay, real quick before if we do man anything. Was meant to travel oh. the oceans in such Never mind. He would surely have been given his own fins. A distraction <laughs> is what one needs. Where is that blasted contact? How is one to prepare for an assignment if one does not have all of the required information? Very well. I shall wait no longer. Beautiful, isn't she? Pardon, monsieur? The open water. There really is nothing quite like her. When one suffers from the mal de mer, the beauty, as you say, is rather more a burden. Forgive me, I just can't imagine being scared of the ocean in this day and age. The potential to see the world is open to even the ordinary man like us. I can assure you, monsieur, it is not a matter of being scared. And as for ordinary... I didn't mean to offend, mister. <laughs> I am... Um... Forgive me, madame. No harm done. Accidents happen. I... My cigarette case. Where is it? I didn't see. You thought I wouldn't notice? A young lady traveling alone. An easy target for you, I bet. I'm sure the young lady would appreciate the help of two handsome strangers.
All right, I was going to say I need to turn subtitles on before we get into it, but it automatically had them. So use L to explore the scene. Try finding the missing cigarette case. Huh. Reading, an excellent way to distract oneself from the surrounding ocean, accompanied by accompanied with tea. However, I cannot agree with their choice of beverage. Unknown item. Mm hmm. Some objects can be viewed in more detail. Try finding all points of interest on this object. So we can rotate it. Ooh. An ornate family crest, the lion, traditionally associated with courage, nobility, and the British. So this could be that lady's cigarette case. Uh -huh. The mechanism used to open the case. Can I open it? Hmm. Dated 1855. It's old, but is in near perfect condition. A silver cigarette case adorned with a family crest. Collected items are advid. Advid? <laughs> That's a new word! Added to your inventory. Press triangle to check this at any time. Okay, we don't really have anything in there yet. A young lady should not be left to gather her own things. A young lady should not be left to gather her own things. I was trying thing. to help her pick it up. <laughs> oh dear. What a mess. I didn't drop it on purpose. I believe you, sir, because it was way over there. You are returning home? I am. But how did you know that? Okay. How do you know I'm returning home? Crimson hair. Such striking hair. Select the correct answers to progress. Much like your investigations, you may need to keep searching for clues before you can solve this fully. Okay, so... We're gonna go with the lion emblem. An ornate family crest, the lion traditionally associated with courage, nobility, and the British. Besides your educated accent, the crest that adorns your cigarette case, it is of British origin. Very observant. It's the crest of my family. And the case belonged to my mother. I take it everywhere with me. Miss Florence Farquhar, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. The pleasure is ours. That Still know who that guy is. Thing, except for my powder case. Is this what you're looking for? It is. Thank you, Miss... Miss Babanyan. Anastasia Babanyan. Anastasia? What a beautiful name. It was my grandmother's. Well, that's everything now. I can't thank you all enough for your help. I'd be happy to escort you. Here, I'll take your back. <laughs> I'm sure you would, unknown handsome stranger. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, thank you. Cabin four. I'll be right behind you. Anastasia. Perhaps I can offer you a token of my gratitude in the bar later. That would be lovely. And you, Mr... Detective Hercule Poirot, at your service. Listen, I could try to say it that beautifully. It would just be worse and worse. More and more butchered. Hercule Poirot. But it just doesn't sound the same! A detective? I was not expecting to meet such a distinguished gentleman on board. Oh. Is it the mustache that makes me distinguished? I did not expect to meet someone of Russian descent on a ship between the great city of Antwerp and Dover. I never mentioned where I was from either. Well, your name is Anastasia. Okay. Anastasia relates to Anastasios. The name Anastasia is the Russian form of the Greek name Anastasios, meaning resurrection. Eastern European accent. 
I presume she is from or closely related to a family of Western European origins. Striking beauty. I cannot recall being taken aback by such beauty before. That must be how I know you're Russian, because you're so beautiful. One did not have to. Anastasia, of Russian origin, meaning resurrection. And here was me, thinking I was special. <laughs> Your knowledge of my heritage is most impressive. And I'll take that as my cue to leave. <laughs> oh, <evening>. awkward! <laughs> She's like, I'm not about to be a third wheel, bye-bye. It bye. seems it's just us remaining. Okay, Anastasia. I would very much like to hear stories from your homeland. Perhaps you would join me in the restaurant. As charming as that would be, I'm feeling rather tired. Oh. It must be all the sea air. Rejected. Then I shall leave you to your slumber. Adieu. Sorry, Hercule. Hercule. As I see, as I can't. I my mouth physically can't say it. The restaurant. I still found my mind drifting back to Mademoiselle Babania. She really was quite charming. She really was. I have spent the first part of this excursion neglecting my duties. It's time to retrieve my notebook from the safe and begin. The combination was not a difficult one to remember. 1815, the Battle of Waterloo. Oh. Oh God. Is this like a real one where I have to go back and forth? Wait, what? <laughs> oh, 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 I get it, I get it, I get it, okay. <laughs> I was making it more complicated than it needed to be, because- Our little gray cells, the Battle of Waterloo took place in 1815. Okay. I don't know why I struggled with that. That was not difficult. One cannot ignore such a blood curdling scream. That's definitely related to Anastasia. Case. It's gone. How could somebody do this? Mademoiselle. I ask that you take a moment to calm. You're a detective, of course. What luck. As luck would have it, one of Belgium's finest. Now, I require as many details of the crime as you can offer. I came to my cabin and began unpacking. I couldn't get the safe working, but the gentleman that helped me with my luggage showed me how it works. Afterwards, I went for a brief walk, and when I returned, the safe was open, and my cigarette case was gone. You just let a stranger help you with your freaking safe and gave him the code? We must consider the suspect list. Those who were aware of the cigarette case's existence. That can only be those who were up on the deck when my luggage spilled. Miss Babanyan, the porter, yourself. And your helpful stranger. I was gonna say, you're missing the obvious one there. Yes, of course. I ask that you gather them for me. And while you are absent, I shall begin my investigation in here, if Mademoiselle permits. Whatever you need to do to find it. This is what I'm most excited for. I love finding clues. Okay, the mind map is unlocked. The theft of Mademoiselle Far Farquad, I keep wanting to call her Farquad, <laughs> cigarette case has plagued me for long enough. I must consider everything I know and deduce the true thief. Whenever Poirot uncovers an interesting area of investigation, a mind map is launched. Here, you can see all of the evidence related to your very first investigation. Using L to move your cursor, try highlighting each piece of evidence to see Poirot's interpretation of them. Okay, so new the safe combination code. Mademoiselle Farquhar must have been aware of the safe combination code to open the safe in the first place. Mademoiselle has not had any visitors to her cabin before her cry for help, that is. 
Mademoiselle set of keys to her cabin given to her when boarding the ship, no doubt. It's important to pay attention to all evidence information given. This will become vital as you start making deductions. For now, press circle to return to the scene. Explore the cabin for more clues. You can use L1 and R1 to rotate the camera whenever you're exploring indoor spaces. Some clues may be easier to spot from certain angles. Okay, that's cool. Hmm. Discoveries. Oh. If the thief left any signs of accessing the safe, perhaps a fingerprint on the dial would be it. Ah. The door remains open and the contents missing. This must have only become obvious once the safe was moved. Perhaps the cleaner should reassess their standards. <laughs> uh -huh. There are no clear or obvious signs that the safe has been tampered with. The thief must have found another way in. So they definitely knew the combo. Mademoiselle, I thought you would be returning with a gentleman also. The gentleman wanted to speak to the porter alone first. Oh, did he? I was unaware he is also a detective. He's not a policeman. He works in insurance, I believe. It appears I shall be spending my time chasing amateur detectives around the ship. Mademoiselle, I would like to start with who had access to the safe combination. No one. It was in a sealed envelope that was waiting for me when I arrived. I memorized it and threw the paper overboard. Four, three, eight, five. It's really not that difficult to remember. I thought you said that that new guy helped you. A similar envelope was waiting for me upon my arrival. The date of the Battle of Waterloo, as I recall. Every safe, although identical, must have a different combination. After the gentleman helped me with the safe, he left. If the mysterious gentleman is behind the theft, he went to great lengths to hide his fingerprints but did little to hide his movements in Mademoiselle Farquhar's cabin. True, is he too obvious? There are many questions that require answers. Answers I believe he may hold. Okay, but I want to keep looking at the clues. Investigating a theft was one of the last things I expected for my journey to London, but as an officer of the law, it is my duty to find who could have stolen Mademoiselle Farquhar's cigarette case and why. Notice the number icon has been updated, so we have one little chain link now. Try connecting two pieces of evidence to form a deduction. Pay attention to the information given to succeed. Use L to highlight nodes and X to stop. Start linking. There are no clear signs or obvious signs that the safe has been tampered with. The thief must have found another way in. Thief left. If the thief left any signs of accessing the safe, perhaps a fingerprint on the dial is it. Hot on the culprit's heels. Well done, you just made your first deduction. Linking existing evidence gives you brand new evidence to use in your investigation. You circle to return to the scene. Okay, so given the state of the safe, I assume the thief simply entered the code and took the contents. Huh. One must present themselves at the best of, at their best at all times. The mirror is a little high for my stature, however. <laughs> all right. I will be attending in a professional capacity, but I would have very much liked an invite of my own as a souvenir of my time in London. The committee at the Royal Edward Gallery requests the pleasure of the presence of Miss Florence Farquhar to the unveiling of an extraordinary new exhibition from Musée Royaux des Beaux Arts de Belgique. The way with which I have butchered that. <laughs> the Penitent Magdalene. The formal invitation on one side, blank on the other. Can I interact with that? No, okay. Can't interact with that. Door handle. I would like to interact with this stuff first. Hmm. 
It seems that Mademoiselle Farquaad chose not to dine in the restaurant. An article from the London Illustrated News. The changing world in which we live in and who is permitted to enjoy it, Florence Farquaad. Farquhar. Yeah, I don't know how to say her last name. Fine art, theater, and literature, as well as other mediums that are synonymous with the arts, have always been considered a middle and upper class area of enjoyment and pastime, with those that fall outside of that desired audience being shunned at the door. Even now, having taken the steps into the 20th century, there are those that continue to exclude the inexperienced and uneducated, the working class, that have not had the privilege of seeing the true beauty of a Monet or read the powerful and relevant words of Charles Dickens in all their splendor. We now sit at the dawn of a new age with London continuing to solidify its name as a pioneer, bringing art, music, and literature to modern audience that care more about the contents of the art form in front of them than the contents of their pockets. So she is in a journalist, an author? One must be careful with such delicate powder, a horrible mess it would cause, although it could come in useful. <gasps> Can we use that for fingerprints? Makeup remains a mystery to me, but judging by Mademoiselle Farquaad's fashion sense, this must be a popular shade. I am surprised huh. Mademoiselle Farquaad's luggage made it this far without spilling with the amount she packed. Huh. Oh, the lock's been jimmied. Uh -huh. These scratches must have been made by something sharp, perhaps a blade. Ooh, we've got a fingerprint! Uh -huh. The light is catching part of a fingerprint. I do not have the appropriate tools with me, but I am sure I can find a way to reveal the full print. Can I use... this? Perhaps the powder case I found may be of some use. Some would say it is rather a rudimentary way of taking fingerprints. I say, quite genius. Magnifique. A fingerprint. Now to determine who it belongs to. You found one, detective? How exciting! I suppose you'll want to take mine. To rule me out, I mean. So did I get it? Um, how do I look at my... Is it in here now? Nope. Okay. Let's see what happens if we talk to her now. Mademoiselle Babagnan, I'm sorry we must continue our conversation under these circumstances. On the contrary, what fantastic luck that you are here. Now I get to see you at work. Okay, please walk me through your movements since our first meeting. Would you allow me a sample of your fingerprint? Am I to be used as your guinea pig? I would not dare compare you to a guinea pig. <laughs> Would you be so kind? The answer is yes, of course. I have nothing to hide. Okay, how are you going to take and compare our fingerprints? The form limitation on one side is blank. Okay, so we'll use... This. And... This. That's not right, come now, concentrate. Okay. Makeup remains a mystery to me. How are you going to take and compare fingerprints? Maybe the mascara in the paper? The thief knew exactly how to keep their identity hidden. I must now take fingerprint samples from the others. Taking Mademoiselle Farquaise will allow me to compare what prints are hers with those that may belong to our thief. Followed by samples from Monsieur Hastings and Monsieur Allard. The only fingerprint that remains on the door is one left by Mademoiselle Farquois upon returning to her cabin. The culprit continues to evade me. There must be something I have not considered. So now that we have this, can we get a fingerprint from here? Perhaps the powder case I found could be of some use. Okay. No signs of any fingerprints on the dial. I may be dealing with a professional thief. Interesting. You could ask me anything. Okay, let's get your whereabouts since our I'm last meeting. I'm afraid I've done very little, actually. After we parted ways, I went to my cabin. 
I had barely unpacked and I was fast asleep on the bed. You did say you were tired, and that will be easy to check, because if anybody saw you Alone? out, I know you're lying. That is a rather personal question, don't you think, detective? I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. A poor attempt at a joke. Yes, I was alone. There is no need to be nervous. And then? And then I was woken up by Florence's scream. I have never heard something so terrifying. You have been most helpful, mademoiselle. I shall not take up any more of your time. Okay, let's go get some other fingerprints. I'm sorry, but it's just not acceptable, Mark. I've apologized to the lady. And that makes everything all right? It was an accident. An accident that could have been avoided if you hadn't spent your morning drinking. Gentlemen, you are behaving like two young boys in the schoolyard. <laughs> it ends now. What's this? Huh. Telescope. A well-crafted brass telescope for viewing the open ocean and the stars above. Could it have been used for spying? Is Mademoiselle Farquhar aware you are acting as her knight in shining armor? I wouldn't go as far as that. I think perhaps we have got off on the wrong foot. Well, you're free to tell me who you are and you're trying to take over my job, so I'd say so. I'm Arthur Hastings. Would... She requested you to follow her to her cabin, no? <laughs> oh, yes, she did, but I wanted to... You wanted to nothing. Speak Go. with the porter privately? This was part of your investigation? Well, I'm not a detective. I was just a... Uh... Then perhaps you will answer some questions that are vital to my investigation as a detective. <laughs> I love him. What can I do for you? Okay, I want to know why you wanted to talk to the porter alone, because that is sketchy, sir. When Florence... Miss Farquhar told me that something had gone missing from her safe, I thought it must have been the porter. I'm sure you did. How so? I'd rather not say with him standing just there. It is not I that controls the volume of your voice. <laughs> you must have noticed the smell of beer on his breath. I wouldn't put it past a man that drinks on the job to steal. They're two very different things, that sir. That is quite the accusation. And if you were correct, you wish to settle the matter with him privately? I wanted to give him what for, but uh, I suppose I lost my nerve. I don't trust this guy. I don't like him. It is. Is my employment relevant to Miss Farquhar's missing cigarette case? I hope you will entertain me for a moment. What would you say the chances of proving a theft in a case such as this one are? Well, a report from a detective like yourself will certainly help expedite her insurance claim. As I thought. It had perhaps not crossed her mind before, but being amongst an officer of the law and an insurance man, the idea of insurance fraud may have appeared appealing. Oh, schnickies. I did not think of that. And she wrote the article about how people who don't have money are like not welcomed in the arts. So maybe her family, just because she comes from a history of money doesn't mean she currently has money. That's a tale as old as time right there. So maybe she wanted to get the insurance money because she's fallen on hard times. Ooh. I'm what some would call a middleman. I oversee the handling of recently sold items and put the buyer in contact with an appropriate insurer. The mention of insurance initially sparked my attention. But the more he talks of his work, I believe he may be my mysterious contact from Lloyd's of London. I was about to say that they are in cahoots, but maybe not. It was your work that took you to Belgium? I can't go into too many details, but I'm actually delivering a rather special piece of art to London. I meant to be meeting an official of some sorts that's supposed to be helping me, but no sign of them yet. <laughs> well, this is awkward. <laughs> Accusing my co-workers of theft. Good job. And it is confirmed. 
it concerns me that my supposed trusted colleague has found himself involved in the middle of my investigation. Yeah, it doesn't look too good, does it? I will continue to withhold my true identity and see how Monsieur Hastings' involvement concludes. Merci, Monsieur. This really is an exciting case. Anything I can do to help Miss Farquhar, please don't hesitate to ask. You can just stop meddling, stay far Your away from everybody else. Your enthusiasm has been noted. Wait, can I get his fingerprint? What can I do for you? Nope, you no have fingerprints. Been most Sorry, sir. Don't mind me. Oh, the other guy was over here, right? Mark. Perhaps you and I can have a more civilized discussion. I'll tell you the same as I told your friend. I will not be bullied. I'm not here to bully you. I just want to ask you some Intimidation questions. Intimidation is not my forte. What is, is uncovering the identity of criminals and making sure they are punished to the fullest extent of the law. And that's me? That is what Oops. I am yet to conclude. Sorry. <laughs> my bad. <gasps> no, I don't want it to be Mark. I was in the cargo hold, cutting something with my knife, and it slipped. No harm done. Oh, I don't like that. I don't want it to be Mark. I'm not quite sure you understand what that means. So now I am a stupid and a drunk? I have not called you a drunk yet, sir. Do you have the knife in question on your person now? I don't. He stole it and won't return it. Ugh. Hastings. Oui, monsieur. You're getting in my way. Was it usual for one to consume alcohol while at work? Who said anything about drinking alcohol? I mean... It does not take a detective to identify the distinct odor on one's breath. Maybe one to nice. calm my nerves. My sea legs aren't here yet, that's all. But you work professionally on a ship? Seems I like a bad plan. I shall let you plan. return to your duties. All right, Hastings. Give me that knife. You've gotten in my way too many times now. Sir. What can I do for you? Monsieur, the porter's knife. May I see it? Stefan, how you say that? Monsieur. <laughs> yeah, I need to take some French, French lessons. Mm. Evidence of blood. This must be what... Monsieur Allard cut himself on. Was that was that better? All my all my French speaking lightweights are just cringing so hard. Or maybe laughing. Mm. The tip has been dulled and there appear to be slight metallic flakes still clinging. <gasps> Mark You I trusted you. I trusted you. Hmm. A standard handle for such a knife. Well worn. A sailor's marlin spike with a foldable blade and a stained spiked tip. All right, can we make some connections now? Let's see what we've got here. No fingerprints on the dial. Strange to find no fingerprints on the dial at all. Although, if he had a bloody hand, I don't think he really would have been able to get in there without leaving any evidence. Mademoiselle Farquhar's fingerprint is the only one that remains on the door handle from when she returned to her cabin. Given the state of the safe, I assume the thief simply entered the code and took the contents. Hmm, can I? Order and method. That is the way to solve the problem. Oops. Okay. Oh, what's this over here? Mademoiselle Babanya says she was quick to lay her head to rest, although there's no proof of her claim. Mademoiselle Farquhar's set of keys to her cabin given to her when boarding the ship. An opportune moment for a valuable item to go missing. She did not have any visitors before her cry for help. And 
she must have been aware of the safe combination code to open it in the first place. And then for Mark here, we have a knife, such as the porters, would be the perfect tool to use to break into the cabin. With no witness to confirm his movements, I cannot really confirm his alibi. Can we go to the cargo hold? Although Hastings was quick to offer up the knife, he must have known what position he was putting himself in by handling it. Uh, Hastings was working alone in his cabin since helping Farquaad with her luggage, so he says. So, we still have to investigate the ship and talk to suspects. So I didn't talk to Farquaad again. Uh. Oops. Okay. Nope. Oh. So I feel like there is a connection I need to make somewhere. It says there's one link. Hmm. Maybe I can link these two together? Voila. Ah, okay. No useful fingerprints remain. The thief has been careful to cover their tracks. Tracks covered. Okay, so that is a new a new link that we will be able to use. So we still need to talk to the suspect, so I need to go back and talk to Farqua, I think. Let's see what you have to say, ma'am. Mademoiselle Farqua, I shall have your cigarette case returned to you before we reach the English coast. I hope so, detective. Okay, let's start with the newspaper article. You caught me, reading my own article. I must say you raise a very interesting point. Art should have no social boundaries. The creativity is for all to enjoy. Thank you for saying that. I wish everyone was as open-minded. But why do you feel that way? Yes, I'm really quite excited about it. You have been invited to a preview at the Royal Edward Gallery. A small world indeed. Will you be in attendance? It's actually one of the reasons that I have been in Belgium. I was lucky enough to have a sneak peek at some of the pieces on show. I'll also be writing a follow-up article on the success of it. Fingers crossed! <laughs> lucky indeed. I am sure it will be a great success. All right. There appears to be scratches on the cabin lock on the cabin door's lock. Who could have caused these scratches? Mark could have. Currently, the only suspect I have for the scratches is the porter, Mark. Okay, essential to any So definitely this one. And definitely the cut. That is not right. What? How? I mean, I feel like if you have a cut in your hand, that means you've been using the tool in the inappropriate way. But we're gonna go with the alcoholic. I do not wish to make an assumption, but his attitude towards drinking while at work leads me to consider it is a bigger issue. Looking at the condition of the door and its lock, I cannot rule out a drunken attempt to open it. Attempt to open it. So now we have a new new mind map connection. Drunken break in. That's a good point. I guess if he was drunk, he could have had like the the liquid encouragement he needed. Okay, but I need to ask if this was insured. Whatever you need. Insured? Was the cigarette case insured? Oh no, why would I have it insured? Anything of substantial monetary value. I'll stop you there, detective. The cigarette case itself is hardly worth two pennies, but to me, it's priceless. Can we verify that? <laughs> Has anyone been alone in your cabin? Not for a second. At least not with my permission. You probably think this silly, naive woman has left her valuables out, or I've just misplaced them. But I assure you, 
That is not me. I don't think that. Someone clearly broke into your room. It had not crossed my mind for even a moment. Thank you. Merci, mademoiselle. That is all for now. Okay. Let's see what we've got. So, none of the suspects know Florence safe combination code. I can confirm that none of the suspects used the code to access the safe. I still don't know about Hastings. Just saying. All right. So... Drunken break-in. Can I connect these two? The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Although the suspects did not have the code to the safe, there is still the chance that it was cracked open. So, can I look at the safe again? What do we have here now? Contradiction. Mademoiselle Farquaad is clearly upset, but its sentimental value appears to outweigh its monetary. So, we're not going to go with the insurance angle. Oh, I have another link. Okay, so we've got the drunken break-in, the safe cracked, and the tracks covered. If you were drunk, you would not be able to cover your tracks. I don't think. Although the suspects do not have the code to the safe, there's still a chance. So maybe these two link together? Is there something I am not seeing? That is not correct. So these two, because they don't link together. Like, you can't have one without the other. Come now. Think on what has already been learned. <laughs> My sleuthing skills are not great. Can I relink other things instead? Things are beginning oh, okay. To become clearer. So... I guess that makes sense, now that I see that. <laughs> the thieves' attempt to fool me and cover their tracks only shows they knew exactly what they were doing. All right, did we get a new thing? Yep, expert break-in. So we also have a new link. So could this now be linked to this? Something just does not feel right. No, okay, so it looks like when something is linked, it stays linked. But I don't think these two link together. Oh, they do! <laughs> yeah, I'm such a bad detective! I can confirm that the porter was nothing more than a scapegoat for the thief. The erratic scratches on the door lock were made to make me believe he was behind the theft. Oh, because if they were an experienced thief, which all the other evidence is proving, that does not fit Drunken Mark. Magnifique. My initial suspicion that the porter may have been the thief is beginning to waver. Would someone go to the lengths of framing him? If they didn't want to be seeming guilty. So the porter was framed. This mind map is so fun. It reminds me of, um, uh, the Telltale Batman game when you had to do those little connections. the suspects I have in front of me. Monsieur Hastings. He is keen to impress Mademoiselle Farquhar and claims that he was alone in his cabin working since. Mark Allard, the porter. Evidence suggests a rather amateur attempt to break into the safe, which in his intoxicated state would make sense. But it was just a ruse. The safe was opened quite masterfully, leaving only signs of a poorly attempted break-in. Mademoiselle Babania, a new friend to Mademoiselle Farquhar, who appeared at a most convenient time. I cannot see a motive besides the obvious value of the cigarette case. But Mademoiselle Farquhar has made it quite clear the value is of a sentimental nature. Perhaps the best thing for me would be to return to my cabin to think. I fear my legs and perhaps even my evening meal will not last much longer amidst these waves, perhaps. Oh! Ah, detective. How goes the investigation? <laughs> Are you doing that? A good detective. Better yet, a great detective. We'll find motive, means, and opportunity. She found it! Miss Babanyan found it! Oh, thank heavens! I was on my way to speak with the captain. 
when I saw something shining underneath one of those pipes. Strange that it was not spotted earlier by any one of us while on the ship's deck. It was placed there! Maybe the thief was scared and dumped it for fear of being caught red-handed. Definitely. Miss Babanyan, Anastasia, you saved the day. I can't thank you enough. And you, of course, detective. Um, but wait, who did it? I find Mademoiselle Babanya's <gasps> explanation of finding the cigarette case rather coincidental. But without any definitive proof, I cannot suggest anything otherwise. The cigarette case has been returned and the coast is in sight, which is what is important. Although there still remains a part of me that craves the truth. Me too. I suppose you can chalk that up as a victory. Mm-hmm. I suppose you can. A victory for Mademoiselle Farqua, but not in the eyes of the law. Well, if anyone asks, I'll confirm what a splendid job you did. Very kind, Monsieur. I don't like him! While we are on the matter of truth, Monsieur Arthur Hastings, you are here to oversee the transportation of the penitent Magdalene painting, are you not? How on earth? <laughs> you are aware of my employment, but not of my true identity. Detective Hercule Poirot. Wait, are you the official that I was supposed to have met on board? You're dang right oui, I am. Monsieur, please accept my apologies for keeping my true identity <laughs> hidden. But I had to be sure your involvement with the theft was purely coincidental. I still don't like him. <laughs> when it comes to the nature of our work, trust must be earned. A little unorthodox, but I suppose I understand. So you can trust me now? No. It continues to grow. Well, we have a couple of weeks before the gala, so hopefully by then you'll trust me with your life. That's ominous. One can hope. All right, guys, so I am going to stop there. Um, thank you again to Blazing Griffin for gifting me this game. <laughs> Baby Light says it's time to go. Um, I was having so much fun with this prologue and I definitely can't wait to see what the rest of the game holds. I love that mind mapping ability. That's really cool, finding all those links. Obviously, I was very not good at it, but I liked finding the links because all of it was the best part of like the detective games that I like to play, finding the clues and putting those pieces of information together. Um, with other games I've played like this, I'm never a huge fan of like the interrogation where you have to ask questions and get them correct or that impacts you. That's like my least favorite part of them. So with this game, I liked how the emphasis was more on finding the clues and putting the pieces of the puzzle together using those clues. And the interrogations were more so just talking points to help get the ball rolling and coming up with more ideas for those clues. So I thought that that was excellent and was very, very well done. I'm definitely excited to keep playing, although I wish I knew the truth of that cigarette case. So hopefully it comes back. Hopefully he doesn't let that go. <laughs> um, but the mind mapping ability was really, really cool. Um, and I liked how different people gave you different pieces of the puzzle. So you had to talk to one person, then you'd get a new piece of information and you'd go to another person that you had already talked to and you'd get more information from them. Or in the case of the thumbprint, I found the thumbprint and then I found something that made me be able to um, actually lift the print with the makeup. So I thought that was really cool too, because you really have to constantly be thinking of all of that evidence and all of the clues you've gotten in order to put that picture together. So I'm really excited to see how difficult, how challenging it gets in the future. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the game. If you did, please make sure you check it out yourself. Um, I'm currently playing it on PlayStation. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope you have an amazing day.